We cannot be a lazy vessel when it comes to being a vessel of God. Now, I don't know how you feel about that word lazy. I don't know how you feel about the word laziness, but if you're like me, that word probably makes you cringe. Yeah, yeah. It probably makes you cringe because nobody wants to be called lazy. When I hear that word, it brings back memories from my childhood. Mm -hmm. it, it, it reminds me about how my dad would go on and on about laziness and not being lazy. He, he would say, for instance, when I was a little boy and we would be walking together in the store, I had the habit of dragging my feet because I like to hear my heels click the ground when I was a little boy. I just thought it was fun. But my dad would say right away, stop doing that. Don't drag your feet. His reasoning being that dragging of the feet was a sign of laziness. And today, all of you chuckled. I do the same thing, honestly, when I think back on all of those things that pop talk that mom talked about laziness. Mm -hmm. See, I imagine that all of you were probably raised in the same manner in which I was raised. Your parents, if you were raised by your parents or if it was your grandparents or your uncles or aunts, they were probably a, a lot like my folks. Mm -hmm. They're probably a lot like my mom and my dad in that laziness was not something that was tolerated. All right. I remember my mom this sweet little woman right here that y'all look at, y'all won't believe it, but I imagine y'all would believe it. Me and my brother would come home from school and all we would want to do is go outside and play. But she was hard on us in that we must get our homework done before we could go outside and play, before we could watch TV or before we could even play video games. She was teaching us then a good work ethic. Mm -hmm. Pop, he would always find some kind of work for, for us to do. I remember one time me and my brother just wanted to go outside and play because again, that's what little boys want to do. And it was a beautiful Saturday. Mm -hmm. No school, no anything. We could just go outside and play. But Pop, he had some wood that he wanted to move from the patio out into the woods. And so instead of me and my brother being able to go outside and play, he had work for us to do again, teaching us good work ethic mm -hmm. on quite a few occasions. He would say that you could tell a lot about a man's work ethic by how he kept up his yard. Mm -hmm. He would say that because he would work a full shift of work and then he would come back home and there were a lot of times that he would just spin out in the yard doing some kind of yard work. And in the winter time, he would come home from work and he would find some kind of wood to chop up, even if the wood did not need to be cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if your parents, your uncles, aunts or grandparents were anything like my folks, then you were most likely raised to ever dread being called lazy. And I imagine that that a lot of you probably still have that same work ethic about you today that your folks put inside of you. Some of us, we work hard in the workplace because, again, that is all we know how to do. Amen. Work hard. Mm -hmm. Then after work, some of us will come home and when we should probably be resting, we'll find some kind of work to do in the house. Because again, that is all we know how to do yeah. is work hard. Yeah. Yeah. We believe that our hard work will be rewarded. And mm -hmm. so that's why we go about working hard. Mm -hmm. So when we take a look here at my key verse for today, here in the sixth chapter of Proverbs, in that sixth verse, We'll see that Solomon had the diligent worker in mind. Mm -hmm. You'll see that he had the diligent worker in mind there when he spoke 
of and to the sluggard. Yeah, yeah. He said to the sluggard there, he said, go to the ant, you sluggard. Mm -hmm. He said, consider her ways and be wise. Yeah. Now, a sluggard, by definition, is defined as a habitually lazy person. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the kind of person that is very content in life. Yeah. Now, when I say that, I want you to understand when I'm speaking about the habitually lazy person, I'm not saying that they're content or being content in life is a necessarily good thing. It is a, a bad thing. You see, some folks are content in life because they've actually worked hard. Mm -hmm. And because of their hard work, they have re reaped the ward of being able to be content. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we are satisfied with our hard work. And because we are satisfied with our hard work, we become content. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the habitually lazy person that we see Solomon speaking of here in this proverb, mm -hmm. they tend not to be driven to move forward in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I mean by this is that the habitually lazy person simply just do not care to move forward. Yeah. They do not set goals. All right. And if they do not set goals, they do not have goals they wish to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so because they are habitually lazy, they show little to no interest in ever reaching a goal because they have no goals set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so because they have no goals set, mm -hmm. they put forth absolutely no effort. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, the truly sad part here mm -hmm. about the slugger, about the habitually lazy person mm -hmm. is that they believe him or herself to actually be wise in their way. Yeah, yeah. They see absolutely nothing wrong with what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And because they see no wrong with what they are doing, the slugger will rarely ever change in their way. And I tell you, that is truly sad. Yeah, yeah. Not to recognize that you are being lazy. Mm -hmm. If you have ever confronted a habitually lazy person, especially in the workplace, mm -hmm. then you know what they'll do. They will look you in your eyes mm -hmm. and they will tell you that they are quote unquote good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. They will look you in your eyes and they will tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Because again, in their eyes, everything is fine with them being habitually lazy. Mm -hmm. All right. Sister Horton, Deanna, I am preaching from the sixth chapter of Proverbs, verses one through eleven. Now, from reading this passage of scripture here, I imagine that Solomon had probably dealt with a habitually lazy person a time or two. All right. All right. I believe he had encountered some that felt that they were very wise in their ways. Mm -hmm. So with them feeling wise in their ways, Solomon, a man of great wisdom, mm -hmm. He felt moved to teach them a very wise lesson. We see him say there in my key verse, the sixth verse, he said to them, the sluggard, he said, look to the ant, consider her ways and be wise, is yeah. what he said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I find it very interesting here that, that Solomon chose to use the lowly ant Mm -hmm. to teach a, a, a valuable lesson mm -hmm. to the person that believes he or she knows what they are doing. All right. The Lord, he often uses things that we don't think very highly of to teach valuable lessons mm -hmm. to us, don't he? Mm -hmm. Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthians, he said, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Mm -hmm. 
You see, we happen to fit into that category of uh, of believing that we are wise and and believing that we are mighty, aren't we? Mankind, we are are certainly very smart, aren't we? We we believe that we are the smartest creatures in the world. And, and we actually aren't wrong in that thought. God made us in this manner. He gave us great intellect. We are told in Genesis, the first chapter of Genesis, he said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them, the Lord said, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So we aren't wrong in believing that we are are wise in our ways. We aren't wrong when we believe that that we are smarter than any other creature Mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. We certainly have dominion in this world, don't we? See, we have our our fancy clothes. We have our our fancy cars. We have our our fancy houses. And then, most importantly to us, we have our fancy pieces of technology. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> you see, when it when when it comes to the animals, we don't think much of the animals. They are lowly in our eyes. All we right. we we eat them. We, we, we hunt the animal and, and some of them hunt them for gain, mm-hmm. for trophies. We yeah. think so lowly of the animals that we make them, we turn them into our pets because mm-hmm. they aren't on our level. Mm-hmm. And I chuckle every now and then at how, how the dogs, how they, they look at us and we be oh. working about, fidgeting about, they'll twist their head sideways and I imagine that that my dogs, because they know everything as well, they, when they twist their head sideways, I imagine they, they be looking and going, what is this human doing now? What silly thing is he doing now? Now, they may not be as smart as, as we are intellectually, yeah. but I tell you that God did create them in a manner, in a way, that they have certain instincts that outclasses that is superior to our intellect. All right. So here this morning, as we consider the way of the ant, Mm -hmm. what do we really know about them? We we know that they can annoy us at times because they always pop up, don't they? Mm -hmm. So the first thing off the bat that I think of when I think of the ant here is I think of just how busy they always seem to be. Amen. Ants are one of the most busiest, if not the most busiest creature on earth. I honestly had to Google the other day if ants fall asleep. (laughs) And the reason why I did this is because I have never seen a sleeping ant. Every time I see an ant, it is always out and about doing something. It very rarely sits still. So ants are very diligent in their work. Now I tell you that they are diligent in their work without thought, really. It is all instinct for them. It may be a little thought in there, but it is instinct for them to be about busy, diligently working here. Solomon tells us there in the seventh verse, if you're still looking at the sixth chapter of Proverbs, Mm -hmm. you see Solomon tells the habitually lazy person that the ant has no captain. Mm -hmm. He tells the sluggard there that the ant has no overseer or ruler to tell it to get to work. Mm -hmm. In other words, the ant doesn't have anybody in his ear shouting at it, telling it what to do, telling it to get to work. It simply works. Now, the sluggard, the habitually lazy person, would always have to have someone in his or her ear telling, yelling at them to get up, telling and yelling at them to do something, telling and yelling at them to get to work. That's how lazy they are. Mm -hmm. The little ant doesn't need anybody to yell at it about what it needs to do. 
Though it may work off of instinct, Solomon shows us that they are actually very wise in their ways. Mm -hmm. He tells us there in the eighth verse, he tells us that the little ant is always out and about gathering, yeah, yeah. gathering up its supplies. Mm -hmm. Says in the summer, the ant is busy gathering all of its food, mm -hmm. storing that food up for when the winter rolls around. Mm -hmm. Where other insects will die off in the winter time, mm -hmm. the ant doesn't die off in the winter time. Why does the ant not die off in the winter time? Mm -hmm. Because it has diligently worked and prepared itself for when winter comes, mm -hmm. to be able to survive off all of that food that it has gathered together during the summer months. Mm -hmm. Now, should the ant, for whatever reason, not be able to store up its resources in preparation for the winter, what do you imagine will happen to the ant? Mm -hmm. it, it, it would not be able to, to survive during the winter. Mm -hmm. So we have been talking about this, and I imagine all of us have, have probably been thinking about laziness in mm -hmm. a worldly manner here, because all I've talked about here is work, work, work. But I tell you that there is a lesson from the ant that we must learn. And I believe that the ant points out a glaring problem for today's Christian. Yeah, yeah. I believe that the ant points out a glaring problem from all of those who would consider themselves to be true worshipers and mm -hmm. genuine believers of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, we have seen that the ant is able to live another day because of its diligence and because of its preparation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This leads me to a question that I feel I am moved to ask here to all of you today. The question that I want to ask all of you today is this. Are you living your days in a manner so that you can live to see the next day. Yeah, yeah. Again, I ask you this question mm -hmm. and I hope that you think about it for a moment. Are you living your days in a manner so that you can live to see the next day? Now, some of us will answer that question and we'll answer that question very quickly with yeah. a yes. We would answer it right away. Yes, preacher. I'm certainly living to see tomorrow, preacher. Yeah, yeah. I'm working hard to, to see tomorrow, preacher. Mm -hmm. Now, let us look at this for a moment, because I tell you, there's a spiritual implication that we are about to get into here. Mm -hmm. When we look at what Solomon writes about laziness throughout Proverbs, mm -hmm. again, you will see that Solomon would consider laziness to be a major crime. He wrote in the 10th chapter of Proverbs in the fourth verse, he wrote, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, mm -hmm. but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He said in the 20th chapter of Proverbs and the 13th verse, he said, do not love sleep is what Solomon said. Yeah, yeah. Said, do not love sleep lest you come to poverty. Mm -hmm. He said, open your eyes and you will be satisfied with bread yeah. mm -hmm. is what Solomon said there. And so, again, it is easy for us when we read those kind of proverbs, when we hear those kind of proverbs, it is easy for us to consider what Solomon is saying there uh, in worldly terms with mm -hmm. with worldly logic there. But as you have often heard me say, there is a spiritual implication to each and every proverb that we must work to understand, that we must study to understand here. The implications of this proverb that I've used here today for my key verse here is that the child of God cannot be lazy spiritually. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the child of God cannot be lazy in their soul, if you will. Mm -hmm. In other words, there. Mm -hmm. You will see Solomon say very plainly in another proverb 
in the 13th chapter of Proverbs in the fourth verse, you see Solomon say that the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing. Mm -hmm. Again, he said the soul very plainly, very clearly. He then also said, but the soul of the diligent, Mm -hmm. very plainly, very clearly, shall be made rich, is what Solomon said there. He was speaking about the soul. He was speaking about the spirit. Mm -hmm. So again, I want to ask you that same question that I just asked here, but with spiritual implications in mind. All right. Are you living your days in a manner Mm -hmm. so that you can live to see the next day? Are you living your days in a manner so that you can live to see the next day? Mm -hmm. What is the next day that I'm speaking of? And am I speaking about Monday? Mm -hmm. Am I speaking about Tuesday? Am I speaking about Wednesday? No. The next day that I'm speaking of now is that day that is fast approaching is that day that is coming. It is that eternal day. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me here today? Mm -hmm. That is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it is fasting. It is fast approaching. I tell you, but sadly, many of us, we go about living in this day as if that day is never coming. As if that eternal day is never coming. However, I want all of us to know, I want all of us to understand here today that we are always just a breath away from seeing that next day. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me here today? I want all of us to understand it. I want all of us to realize this, that we are all just a breath. We are all just a step away from seeing that eternal day. Yeah, yeah. All right. So with that in mind, the believer should always be living each and every day, diligently working in service of the Lord in preparation for that day that I tell you Mm -hmm. is fast approaching. Again, we cannot be a lazy vessel. Mm -hmm. Let us remember what we learned last week. God uses us for his higher plans. Mm -hmm. He uses us for his higher purpose. And we know that his higher plans, we know that his higher purpose is a plan and purpose of serving each other. Mm -hmm. As the ant has a colony and as the ant lives for its colony, I tell you today that we as the true worshipers, the true followers, the genuine believers of God, we as Christians are part of a colony. That colony is mankind. That colony is one another. And I tell you that we ought to be living for each other. We ought to be living for one another and getting each other prepared for the day that is fast approaching. Again, I ask you that question again. Mm -hmm. Are you living in a manner today in order to be able to see the day that is coming? It is recorded in the Gospels Mm -hmm. that Jesus said to those who would follow after him, Mm -hmm. he said, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, Mm -hmm. drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly Mm -hmm. for it will come as a snare on all of those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch Jesus said, therefore, Mm -hmm. Jesus said, pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the son of man. Mm -hmm. One of the great sins of Christians in the world today, I tell you, is the sin of laziness. That's right. 
One of the great sins that we as the true worshipers, Mm -hmm. we as the genuine believers, one of the great sins that we commit today and we don't pay it much attention Mm -hmm. because when we think of sin, we always think of the big ones. You know, we we we, we think of adultery and fornication. Mm -hmm. We think of lying and things Mm -hmm. like that. But one of the great sins that we commit today is the sin of laziness. Mm -hmm. What I mean by this is that we are not being diligent in our work. We, 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 we are not allowing ourselves to be diligently used by the Lord as a vessel of his. Mm -hmm. We are not diligently working hard as a vessel of the Lord in the service of ourselves Mm -hmm. and in the service of those who are around us. Mm -hmm. We are not diligently working in preparation for ourselves and for those who are around us for that day that is coming again. Remember what happens to the ant. Mm -hmm. If it does not diligently work hard in preparation for the winter. Now scripture tells us scripture tells the believer repeatedly to be diligent in the faith. Mm -hmm. Scripture tells us over and over and over again, that we ought to be diligent in serving the Lord, which we again know is a service of serving each other. Now I want to direct your attention to what Paul wrote in the 12th chapter of Romans. Mm -hmm. Again, just bookmark that sixth chapter of Proverbs because we'll go back there in a moment. And in the 12th chapter of Romans, I want you to look at the 10th through the 13th verse. I want you to look at the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th verse. And I want you to to see what Paul wrote here to the Romans on this thought of being diligent in the faith and this thought uh, on laziness. Paul, he wrote, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love Mm -hmm. in honor, giving preference to one another said not lagging in diligence. Mm -hmm. Highlight that, underline that, put a square around that in your Bible. I want you to, every time you go to that verse, I want that to stand out to you. Where Paul says, not lagging in diligence. He went on to say, fervent in spirit, Mm -hmm. serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. What a powerful scripture that is. I want you to pay very close attention to what Paul said there. Notice that he first speaks of ministering to each other. Again, we know this is how God uses us, right? When when Paul speaks of being kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, when he speaks of that, he is speaking of ministering to each other. Mm -hmm. When he says in honor, giving preference to one another and distributing to the needs of the saints, I tell you again, Paul is talking again about ministering to one another. He's talking about us being used as a vessel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's speaking of there in that scripture. He's speaking of God's higher plans. Again, he is speaking of God's higher purpose for all of us who will call ourselves a child of God. He's saying that this is what a child of God ought to be doing. And we ought to be doing it. Paul says diligently. He doesn't say that we ought to be doing that lazily, does he? You don't see lazy anywhere in that scripture. Diligence, steadfast is used in that scripture. Fervent is used in that scripture there. Notice Paul said we should be fervent in our spirit. Mm -hmm. We should be fervent in our soul. Notice that's what he said there. To be fervent in our spirit. Yeah. In our in our in our service yeah. Yeah. is to be zealous mm-hmm. and to be zealous means to to burn hot, mm-hmm. to wax hot, yeah. to be a flame. Mm-hmm. 
Now, a habitually lazy person, I tell you, there's no flame about a habitually lazy person. Mm -hmm. There's no flame burning in a habitually lazy person's mm -hmm. spirit. Mm -hmm. a, a habitually lazy person in the spirit would not burn, right? They, they would be ice cold. They would be the polar opposite, which is to say that they aren't diligently active. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And if they aren't diligently active in their spirit, in their soul, mm -hmm. That means that they are not active for the Lord. They aren't active for God. I wonder today, and I wonder this often, have we become habitually lazy in our spirit? Have, have we become habitually lazy in, in our soul? Have we become habitually lazy in our service of God today? I often feel like today's Christian is not as active as we ought to be. Mm -hmm. I, I often feel like we aren't as active in the faith as we should be. Mm -hmm. We aren't active in our service of the Lord. We are active in our service of one another mm -hmm. and all of those who are around us. Mm -hmm. How often are we doing good for all of those who are around us? How often are we actually ministering to them? Mm -hmm. How often are we being kindly affectionate to those who are around us with brotherly love? Yeah, yeah. How often are we giving preference and, and, and showing honor to those who are around us? Mm -hmm. Again, I ask, how often are we helping others? Yeah. How yeah. active are we truly in the faith of being used by the Lord and being a vessel of his. Yeah. You see, many of us, we started out how the new worker starts out in the workplace. We started out happy, mm -hmm. filled with all kind of energy. We was, was very active in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But you know how it is. After you done worked a month, a couple of months, you back off a little bit, don't you? Mm -hmm. You don't you don't work as hard. All right. You feel that check is guaranteed, don't you? Mm -hmm. We began to slow down over time in our faith. All right. Many of us started out very active in our faith like a new employee would, yet over time many of us became very complacent in the workplace. The workplace of faith, I tell you. We became very complacent in the activity of our faith. In other words, we became lazy in our spirits. Right. See, some of us, we began to slow down in our activity when we slowed down in our prayer life first. Mm -hmm. Others of us slowed down in our activity of faith when we began to slow down in the word of God. All right. All right. We began to slow down in the activity of our faith when we began to slow down in our studying of the word of God. Yeah, yeah. Many of us, we began to slow down in the activity of our faith when we began to slow down in our praise and in our worship of the Lord. Mm -hmm. say in all of this slowing down, we began to slow down in our usefulness for the Lord. We began to slow down in, in treating those who are around us with love and grace, which is the calling of all of those who are profess and proclaim to be a child of God. See, there is a danger in slowing down. Mm -hmm. The danger in slowing down, the danger in not being fervent in the faith is that when you slow down, what eventually happens? No. You come to a halt. Mm -hmm. You come to a stop. No. And because they have stopped, those who are habitually lazy in their spirit, mm -hmm they have stopped in the faith. Mm -hmm. They have become habitually lazy in the faith. Mm -hmm. And I often wonder today about the Christian in our world today. Mm -hmm. 
have we slowed down so much in the faith? Have we slowed down so much in our spirit that we have come to a stop? Have we slowed down in our faith that not only we have come to a stop, but we have become habitually lazy in our spirits today? We are now like that fine china that I mentioned in last week's sermon. All right. That that fine china that is sitting in, in grandma's china cabinet mm-hmm. that does not get used. <laughs> that simply sits still. Yeah. Many of us are spiritually asleep right now. Many of us are resting in a hammock spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Many of us are content with our profession of faith instead of actively participating in the activity of faith. Mm -hmm. And I tell you today, that bothers me. It bothers me tremendously. Mm -hmm. See, I want to direct your attention again back to Proverbs, the sixth chapter, because Solomon, he had a couple of questions for those who would be a sluggard spiritually Mm -hmm. that I want us to briefly take a look at here because the habitually lazy person in spirit needs to answer these questions today. We'll see that Solomon, he asked the sluggard there in the ninth verse. He asked, how long will you slumber? Oh, sluggard. He said, he said, when will you rise from your sleep? Yeah. He is essentially asking the habitually lazy person in spirit, mm-hmm. how long are you going to keep being lazy? How long are you going to stay asleep? Yeah. When are you going to get up? When are you going to wake up? When are you going to get about doing something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I ask that same question today. Mm-hmm to all those who are habitually lazy in their spirit today. How long are you going to slumber in your spirit? How long are you going to stay asleep spiritually? When will you rise from your sleep? When are you going to wake up as true worshipers and followers of Christ? We cannot slumber. Yeah. We cannot stay asleep. All right. We cannot slumber long. We cannot sleep long. We cannot become, we cannot be habitually lazy in our spirits. Yeah. 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 Solomon said there in the 10th verse, he said that the habitually lazy person is going to have a response. He said they're going to respond with, a little sleep, a little slumber. In other words, the habitually lazy person is going to respond, hey, let me sleep just a little bit longer. (laughs) Hey, just a few more minutes. Let let me just get a bit more sleep. The habitually lazy person will say this Mm -hmm. and they'll never wake back up. They'll never wake up out of their sleep. They'll just stay asleep. Solomon, he warns the sluggard there. We'll see in the 11th verse. He warns the sluggard of what is to come should they remain content in their laziness. He said to them, he said, so shall your poverty come on you. Mm -hmm. He said it will come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Mm -hmm. How can a lazy person ever get anywhere if all they do is sleep? How can they gain anything if all they ever do is sleep? Spiritual implications in mind here. How can a habitually lazy person in spirit Mm -hmm. gain the riches of heaven if all they do is stay asleep spiritually? Not only that, but how can they work for heaven to, to get others to join in to, to gain in heaven. If all they do is stay asleep in the spirit. See, Solomon says there that the sluggard, all they do when they stay asleep is become poor and poor. 
slowly over time, they'll lose all that they have mm -hmm. and they'll eventually have nothing and they will become helpless. Mm -hmm. So spiritually speaking here, we can't allow that to happen to us. All right. All right. Spiritually speaking, when the believer is diligently in use, mm -hmm. When the believer is diligently allowing God to use them for his higher plans and for his higher purpose, he or she, I tell you today, is building up their riches, not in this world, but in the heavenly kingdom, in that day that is coming, that is fast approaching, in that tomorrow that I tell you today is on the way. The spiritual sluggard, the, sp the spiritual habitually lazy person is not building towards anything yeah. but eternal poverty. Yeah. Yeah. So my final question for those who are habitually lazy in their soul today is this. Are you ready to finally wake up from yeah. your slumber? Yeah. Are you ready to finally wake up from yeah. your sleep? Mm -hmm. Are you ready yeah. to finally get to work? in your soul. You see, yeah. there is much work to do in our world today. Mm -hmm. There is much building that needs to be done in our world today. Mm -hmm. There is much preparation that must be done to all the souls that are in our world today. But again, I tell you here today, God is not going to use a habitually lazy person in all spirit. Right. All right. The Lord is not going to use someone who is habitually lazy in their spirit today. You see, we have work to do for not only ourselves, but for all of those who are around us. And God is not going to use someone that does not want to go to work. All right. All right. Yes, Lord. You see, we have work to do. Not only for ourselves, but even for all those who are around us mm -hmm. so that we can all be fit and ready mm -hmm. to be part of God's heavenly kingdom oh, yeah. mm -hmm. instead of ending up in spiritual poverty for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should desire to be diligent in doing good. We should desire to be diligent in our work. We should mm -hmm. desire to be fervent in our spirits today. Yeah. Now, am I saying we need to work until we drop? Absolutely not. That is not what I'm saying here. We absolutely, I tell you today, we cannot be habitually lazy in our spirit. Again, God will not use a habitually lazy per person. And again, all of us said last week when I asked the question, all of us said that we desire to be a vessel of the Lord. So if we truly do desire to be a vessel of God today, I say to all of you today, let us wake up if we are asleep. Let us wake up from our slumber and allow God to use us. So I say to all of you today, all of you who are habitually lazy in the spirit, I'm not trying to talk mean about anybody, but this is the message from God today. God desires to use you. So let us move out of that laziness and allow the Lord to use us today. Amen. 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 Amen.